Living Waters presents On the Box. Welcome to another edition of On the Box. It is Thursday, and Brad has perfected the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it was go. very good, That Brad. was excellent. Yeah. You shine. You shine back there. And uh, Danny's back, but hey, be praying for Danny. He's still fighting a cold, and uh, we don't want it to turn into pneumonia or anything worse. So, <laughs> you doing okay, Danny? You hanging in there? Thumbs up. All right, Daniel, how are you? Settle down. Scotty. Yeah, I'm here. You're here, brother. Yeah. What are you working on right now? Uh, as far as I at the ministry, the yeah. uh, well, the new video and getting that all ready. And What's left to how do How much have we talked about? Uh, very, very little. And we'll talk very little about it now. Uh, what's left to do on my end? Hopefully nothing more. Ah, good. <laughs> because uh, we have been uh, giving it a lot of attention, and I think it's pretty close to being ready. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, Do you have a guesstimate as to how many hours you've put in on just this one well, project? Uh, I know you came in a little later into it. I, that's what I was going to say. There's been so many hours put in on it uh, besides Months. me. I'm yeah. just on the finishing end of it and doing color. and. Uh, uh, but that's uh, been consuming most of your time lately, hasn't it? Text corrections and lots of different things like that. But I think we got them. Yeah. We're close. Just about all. There's <laughs> the, you always find one more when you're all done. You, there's always one more thing, and then you have to spend hours and hours regenerating the video. But yeah. hopefully we've done enough of that. So all right, we'll we're see. close. We're close. Um, it is exciting, though. And the um, impact, uh, I have, like everybody else here, yeah. uh, extremely high expectations. Uh, more than that, hope. Yeah. I, uh, I had an opportunity to screen it with about 30 people in my church a week or so ago. Mm. And uh, men and women alike were in tears at the end. It yeah, that's been amazing. the uh, reaction. And there's been so much that, uh, uh, so much help, so many doors open that we weren't pushing on that just have come. And it's like one confirmation after another. Yeah. And so uh, we're... Yeah. We're not just excited about this. We're we're really hoping for uh, uh, something big to happen, yeah. Yeah. something that will, uh, you know, n nationwide certainly, and uh, hopefully worldwide, and with the greatest impact. Yeah. So if you want more information about that, you gotta wait. <laughs> you gotta wait. Hey, I was just uh, flipping through some uh, news pages on my computer before we came in. Great news coming out of North Carolina. They have defunded Planned Parenthood in North Carolina. Can we get an applause for wow. that? Yeah! Way to go, North Carolina. <laughs> Apparently, their pro-murder uh, of children uh, governor had uh, vetoed the budget that called for the defunding, and the legislator turned around and spanked the governor and said, no, we're going <laughs> we're gonna to override your veto. Mm -hmm. so, so North Carolina now follows Indiana and Kansas for being uh, pro-life states, defunding uh, that horrible organization, Planned Parenthood. Boy, that's significant. It's very significant. I, I 47 mean, states to go. The timing yeah. is kind of sig significant. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, and uh, I actually posted part one of this article I've been working on on the Christian and alcohol. Um, every, it ah. seems like every paragraph I finished something new came up to add. So I think part one's about 3,000 words. <laughs> and so I decided to stop there, and now I'm working on, on part two. But It's, it's an important subject. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. And there's a lot of controversy over it and a, a lot of going back and forth. Yeah. And yeah, so part one deals with uh, the reality that there is no prohibition for the Christian to consume alcoholic beverages in Scripture. Part two is going to be... Uh, the many good reasons in Scripture to abstain from exercising that liberty. So, good. We'll see what people think. So it ought, ought to be interesting. Also today, we are going to show you a, a video from uh, Matt Slick and Carm. They went out to the Boise uh, Street Fair. You think Boise would be a pretty quiet place? Well, uh, oh. some interesting heckling, and uh, maybe even a little anointing with beer uh, going on in in this video. And uh, then we're going to jump to the chat room and uh, mailbag for questions. But before we do that, what are we talking about today as far as the Exodus case? The Exodus case. Um, do we have the book? 
Yes, we do. This it's is somewhere. not the one you left I'm in not Israel. the book, but yeah. um, I like to show it because really what I'm doing is just kind of a book report and it shows the website and gives accreditation uh, to where uh, it's well deserved. And Dr. Muller has done some really interesting work. But anyway, uh, as we're progressing along, um, that first map, it's, uh, it's from Google Earth. And it shows the overall area, and and the upper left, I believe, is what you're looking at, is the um, uh, Egypt Delta, and then that triangle in the center is the Sinai Peninsula, and uh, the two fingers of the Red Sea, and the one on the right is called the Gulf of Aqaba. And uh, all descriptions of Midian are to... Uh, the right of that and so the the next uh, map shows you uh, what I'm talking about the land of Midian and this is kind of a, a, um, a review of what we talked about last time is to the east of the Gulf of Aqaba and so if that's where uh, Moses fled to that's where Jethro the priest of Midian as he's called uh, would be located and of course water is of supreme importance and there aren't that many sites in that many places so the populations would gather around those places and we know from scripture that when Moses came into the land of Midian uh, the daughters of Jethro were feeding their sheep uh, and uh, that he helped them out there and uh, so here you have an Egyptian general, 40-year-old man, uh, you know, well into mature years, fleeing from uh, those who want to kill him. And he ends up there and um, uh, becomes uh, uh, invited to the house of uh, Jethro. And, and so he spends 40 years. Now the, the next 40 years in the land of Midian and there isn't as a shepherd a, basically over the over the flocks of Jethro he became part of his household he married one of his daughters Zipporah they had two sons and um, so that kind of narrows down where Mount Sinai is what we consider Mount Sinai and again uh, we're not talking about the peninsula of Sinai where the traditional site is and there's not really much reason at all to have said that when there are so many reasons and it keeps getting confirmed in not only biblical texts but uh, extra biblical texts like Josephus and he makes mention of a lot of different things so uh, one of the things he makes mention of is um, Josephus has a note about uh, a particular mountain range called Jabal al Al, which is the same in Arabic as saying El, El, God, yeah. God, laws, and it is in the vicinity of Al Bad. It is the tallest of the mountains in the area, and. Um, that the shepherds would not go there because it was considered a sacred right. mountain. And um, uh, on the old maps that do uh, Dr. Moeller has examined, Mount Horeb is another name for S Mount Sinai we're talking about. As a matter of fact, in Exodus it's called Horeb. In um, Exodus 3, 1, it's also called Mountain of God. In um, uh, Josephus calls it Sinai. Paul in Galatians calls it Mount Sinai in Arabia, that's which important. is yeah, that's very important. Horeb, the Mount of God, uh, that was in First Kings when Elijah fled to the Mountain of God. We're talking about this same place. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty interesting. There's all these things coming together, you know. And uh, there is a cave in this uh, mountain, and uh, oh, somebody has sent us pictures of from inside the cave, which may very well be the cave that Elijah spent time in, in the mountain of God. Hmm. Um, so we talked about uh, this is where Moses was. Um, 
He was responsible for the flocks, and he, and so it couldn't have been that far from water, right. the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, can we see that second, uh, uh, third one, the second map oh. again? Um, yeah, you see where Al Bad is and where um, Horeb is, and so it's not that far, and it's certainly within walking distance, and. Uh, um, the well of Moses. You know, I, I want to say one other thing. Um, go to Google, Google Earth. Uh, on this subject, you will just be fascinated when you zoom in. People have pictures mm -hmm. of all these places, including the well of Moses and um, the uh, Saudi Arabia uh, Department of Tourism has consigned some pictures to be taken their panoramics of the well of Moses you can look and see uh, what the traditional site is and uh, pictures of this site of um, uh, Mount Sinai pictures from the mountain looking down uh, a, a 3d image it is absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. so I really encourage you to go there you're gonna get much more information there and I'm gonna Leave it at that for now, unless you want me to take up more time. Yeah, because there's more information about the mountain, right? Uh, there is. Let me show you. Wanna, well, we can pick it up tomorrow since we're going to be together tomorrow if you want. Yeah. That's up to you. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Um, Let's tease them. Uh, teaser. This is an official uh, unboxing. Let teaser. me show you. Uh, sure. Show the first picture of the mountain. It's very dark, it's very high, but the top of it is real dark looking I don't know if that Looks represents burnt. anything <laughs> it does <laughs> but that whole range around there does and um, and there are many other things that uh, support that this is where the children of Israel were including uh, a, a, an altar area and just a lot of other stuff that we'll get into. Right now, all we're talking about is where the Moses. Location. Yeah, Moses was in Midian. He was with the sheep, and he was in the area, and he came to this place, and he saw a bush that burned with fire. And by the way, there is a bush, and it's no quite more. quite remarkable. No more tease. Tease. We have to tease them. Uh, yeah, we'll I've drive been, them back to the show. I've been fascinated with all there of this. So all right. So, I uh, hope you are, too. So join us again tomorrow, and uh, we'll continue talking about uh, the mountain of God. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, and uh, the Exodus case, will you show that picture again? I want to show that one more time, especially for Maria. Father's Day is coming up on Sunday. <laughs> and uh, while it's a little pricey, what was it, about $60, $60, $70? Yeah, the best price that I've found is on the uh, second website, um, Th where they're making a movie of all of this mm -hmm. uh, based uh, in large part on this book the conspiracy dot com and they also sell the book and that was about the best price I'd seen but still you're talking uh, $40 oh, really? or 45 Well, and you want to make sure to get the third edition right that's the latest that's edition, the latest the one edition. with the latest notes okay very good alright from Midian to Boise Idaho in about two seconds uh, what you're about to see is a uh, short video clip from Matt Slick of CARM, C-A-R-M dot org, friend of the ministry, and uh, he's been on the show as a, as a guest. I uh, went to the Boise Street Fair and with a couple other evangelists. Uh, you, might recognize, uh, you might recognize them, not from our ministry, but from other videos on YouTube. And uh, listen to how these guys handle some uh, hecklers outside the porta-potties of the street fair. <laughs> Let's take a look. All right, I'm on my way to, uh, to do some street evangelism. Actually, there's some friends I've got who are out there doing that. I'm going to go check it out and uh, just see what happens and see what the Lord's got for us. So we're going to let you know what's going to happen. See you. Bye. <laughs> A different Jesus. Yes. You look like well. You my source of truth is the Bible. Did my, we tell you that? My source of my source of truth <laughs> is the Bible. Okay. You do. Also, and I want to make sure that. Um, before you leave, you'll hear the good news. The gospel means good news. The craziest thing in the universe. God saves us from himself. What do you want, sir? What's up? I'm trying to prove that this God in the universe is the greatest God that needs to be worshipped. Oh, my goodness. 
you will burn for your sin unless you repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Forsake sin and trust Him. If you die in your sin, yeah. if you die in your sin, the Bible is very clear, you will be separated from God forever okay, so and ever and ever. I can be a pilot and go kill people. As long as I repent, I'm going to heaven, right? No, as long I as I say, that. oh, you know what? I'm getting ready to go on the death chair. As long as I go, oh, you know what? I accept Jesus. No. And I'll, then I'm good to go. I didn't say that. All right. God How is the you know author. What kind of life I'm living? God right? is the author and How finisher much? of your faith, okay? okay. When God it's seems infallible, you. inerrant word passed down through through time and written by infallible men whom he used okay, to pin it infallibly because God is sovereign. So friends, it's, it's not by anything that you do. All amazed and, and actually just staggered by his amazing love for you that you'll forsake. I cast the demons. You'll forsake your sin. You. You'll run from you your don't sin. Get that, get that. Don't you are no sin. Yo, I'm, I'm not getting sir. Sir, I'm serious. In hell, the Bible yeah. says the worm will, listen, don't Dude, leave this in the good part. I want to make sure you understand. Yeah. So friends, the book of Gilgamesh was written, written 2,500 years, 2,500 years to 3,000 years before the Bible. By the love of God. Look it up and you'll see that the Bible is plagiaristic, it, it's, it's a rip-off of the book of Gilgamesh. So anything written before means that it, that anything that came out just automatically copied it? Is that what you're saying? Is Joshua? Anything that came out before? If you're saying, if you write something here, someone writes something afterwards, it automatically means that they copied? Yes! Thanks for learning. Those are the ones that you're saying. Those are the ones that you're saying. I'm pleading with people to be saved because if somebody leaves here tonight and drives home and gets hit by a car and dies and doesn't know Jesus, they're going to go to hell. You know, I've, uh, hmm. I've had people try to cast demons out of me while I was preaching. Mm. But never had I have I had anyone like Sean Holes there have someone tried to cast them out by anointing me with Budweiser. You ever run into anything like that? <laughs> I've run into some strange uh, things <laughs> in my travels. So, so one guy burned a dollar uh, that I had given him in front of me, uh -huh. um, and I uh, had people moon me a couple of times. <laughs> Which is uh, not, which is embarrassing. And speaking, of, speaking of which, we couldn't see the total eclipse of the moon on this side of the planet. I'm just trying to clean this yeah, up. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you run into some strange things, and yep. um, uh, people don't want to hear it. The ones that object, they're going to be the most, uh, the most aggressive. Uh, when it comes to trying to shut you up and stop you from saying what you're there to say. And uh, we try the best we can to be congenial and uh, to reason, but uh, they become unreasonable. Yeah. And, uh, the, uh, la the last heckler there, uh, typical cut and paster, if I had a dollar for every time someone brought up the book of Gilgamesh, um, but as you could see, it took Matt Slick all of about 10, 15 seconds to dismantle this guy and uh, asked him one or two questions and the guy was stumbling over himself. Mm. He's probably never seen the book of Gilgamesh. He's probably never read the Bible either. But he saw on some website, you know, that the Bible is, you know, has plagiarized the book of Gilgamesh and uh, he doesn't really know what he's talking about. So, Boy, Matt is the Matt wrong Sharp, person yeah. to yeah. <laughs> yeah, <the guy> try <laughs> no to idea. pull that one yeah. up. <laughs> Yeah, one of the best uh, apologists in the country. And this guy walks up thinking, oh, I got him with the Gilgamesh question. And then about 30 seconds later, uh, uh. <laughs> his, we his website uh, is just amazing. And all of the information and uh, answers to objections, uh, common and uncommon. Yeah. And uh, cults and different. It's just yeah, I've been following this site for more than 20 years. Tremendous resource. Yeah, yeah. CARM. C-A-R-M dot org. C-A-R-M dot org mm -hmm. with Matt Slick. You will be blessed and encouraged and equipped yeah. if you hang out on that site. All right. We're going to go to the mailbag. First one uh, is a chat room question. What do you say to someone who says that they will not receive the gift of God because, quote, they did the crime, they will do the time, end quote? Well, it's a form of justification. Yep. 
It's a, it's a form of paying back. Well, I, I've got to do something to earn my salvation. But they say it in a way, uh, you know, that tries to make sense. But it's really a, another reason they say it is to stop you from uh, sharing the gospel. Yeah. yeah, I'm too bad and there's no help for me. And they've resolved themselves to that. And it's really what they want. Last, uh, last June, uh, after we ran into some trouble down in, uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, uh, Chad and I went out to a Third Street Promenade to do some recon to see if we could take the next academy out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was early in the day. The crowds weren't big. I was open-air preaching to a small group. And when I had finished, there was a guy named Patrick, uh, probably about our age, um, there on a bike. And uh, he said, that was very, very compelling. In fact, you have convinced me not to become a Christian. And so I was a little taken aback by that. And this was his argument. Uh, what you said was so compelling, there's no way I'm going to let Jesus Christ pay for what I have done. I'm going to take the hit. I'm going to pay for my sins. Mm. And in fact, if you go to uh, the Ambassadors Alliance YouTube page, mm. uh, youtube.com uh, Alliance Evangelism, uh, we've got a uh, four-part uh, video of that conversation with Patrick after that open air about 45 minutes long but that was his main argument the whole time and and you're absolutely right it was it was another form of self-justification uh, self-righteousness really um, he was going to do the noble thing he thought and deny Christ and and go to hell and basically what I said to him uh, at the end of the conversation mm-hmm. is that ultimately what you're doing is you're disobeying God. If you truly wanted to honor God, you would obey him. And Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. Mm-hmm. And so if you think you're going to die and stand before God and say, nope, I'm not going to heaven. It's nothing more than self-righteousness and sin. And yes, you will go to hell, but not as a noble act to pay the penalty for your sins, but as the just punishment mm-hmm. for your sins. So uh, so many times people use this argument uh, in a way to justify their thinking, yep. their logic. And it's like, I'm too bad, so there's no use in trying. Right. I, you know, he can't forgive this, he can't do that, so why try? I'm just going to enjoy myself while I'm here. And uh, it's, it's a rejection of the gospel. It's, it's calling God a liar also. Right. Yes. Because uh, all who repent and believe, uh, they won't perish. And God is not willing that any should perish. And that's why he came and uh, made uh, atonement and made a way to escape. And you're rejecting it. Yeah, and so absolutely. it's uh, it's terrible. Uh, you're not you're calling God a liar you're rejecting the gift and you're condemning you're res- resigning yourself to be condemned to hell for all eternity and nobody in their right mind wants That's that right. yeah and there's nothing noble about it and no as as, uh, <laughs> as you'd see if you visit the uh, YouTube page noble is like I worthy in some sense right yeah nothing noble about it uh, you're merely You've merely found a more comfortable way to suppress the truth in your unrighteousness mm. oh, by good saying, way. hey, I'll take yeah. the hit for Jesus. So, All right, next one comes from Mike out of the mailbag. I am going on a mission trip to Ghana, Africa in August. How would you, using the law work there, working at times through an interpreter? Any tips? Keep up the great work. Now, you did some open-air preaching in Europe. You had to use an interpreter while you were preaching. How did that work out? Uh, y- you get used to it. It's You stop and wait for him to interpret. And uh, it's not like you have to understand the language uh, to know when to start again. It, it's just a natural thing. But uh, not only in Europe, um, but in Russia, and in, uh, witnessing, and um, in Africa. Uh, Uganda and um, these are the places you have been yeah and uh, did actually even an open air in in Africa um, through an interpreter really yeah and um, there's no difference it, it doesn't matter whether you're doing open air or witnessing one-to-one I say the same thing mm-hmm. you do too it's just whether speaking to a lot of people there's a different dynamic you there is a a, 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 a certain control that you need to um, learn and gain when you're talking talking to large amounts of people but the essence of what you're saying is the same so there's no difference and it doesn't matter whether I'm talking to an unbeliever or a Christian 
I'm going to use the law and find out, you know, what you say you're a Christian, but the law is what will ferret it out. And those who are humble and broken, they admit, uh, they readily admit their sin. And those who are self-righteous and proud, they resist uh, the, the Christians. They want to jump right to grace. Mm -hmm. And so be suspicious of those and make sure you go to, to the law with them because that's the thing that digs up the ground. That, that's where you find the stones is when you uh, use the law, it's the plow to find out what's underneath it, what you can't see. Yeah, and you know, so sadly, sadly, Africa has basically been raped and pillaged by the prosperity gospel. Um, the hucksters mm -hmm. here in the United States, uh, I guess they're running out of money here in the States to you know, bleed people dry, and so now they're going to places like Africa and, and uh, the poor parts of uh, the Eastern Bloc of Europe, bringing this prosperity gospel, and so uh, a gospel without the teeth of the law. Yeah, uh, you know, and it's promises that aren't in the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Well, the prosperity doctrine, yeah. but e but even just half the message. Right. When you just focus on grace and the wonderful things of God, well, you've left out half the message. And is that the gospel? If it's a half truth? No. Not according to Scripture, and not according to a biblical pattern, which is what we keep hitting on and keep going back to. Yeah. Now, um, when, you use, when you use an interpreter in a foreign country, do you spend some time briefing with them to make sure that they have an understanding of the law, that they're going to repeat exactly what you say and not mm. paraphrase and end up preaching a different gospel without you knowing it? Um, I have at times said, make sure that you repeat what I say. Uh, in in uh, Russia, it was very obvious one time that they were interpreting what I said because you can tell uh, when it's one on one, you can tell from the reaction of the person. Did that interpreter say what I just said? Because you know there ah. should be certain reactions. Yeah. So you can tell uh, with a larger crowd open air, uh, you just you may ma mention that. But you're really looking for somebody that's going to be a good interpreter. And a good interpreter is going to interpret what you say, not what they think uh, yeah. should be there. I, I would think another indication, too, would be if uh, if you say one sentence and pause and they go on for five minutes in right. the uh, native language, something else is being said. Right, right. Yeah. right. Okay, hey, we are out of time. Uh, we will get to more of these uh, questions tomorrow. Scotty will be with us again tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to uh, feature a good friend of ours, Mike Stockwell from uh, Cross Country Evangelism. Uh, he'll also be seen in the uh, behind the scenes uh, video this coming week and uh, we've got uh, some interesting footage of a pretty crazy open air he was involved in uh, back east so make sure to join us tomorrow 11 30 a.m pacific time right here and until then be encouraged strengthened and unafraid proclaim the gospel Living Waters presents On the Box.